Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. All right, today I am looking at taking some of my clubs to storage and uh, some of the ones I'm going to take are the Stan Thompson. I'm a fan. I've been collecting his stuff for years and um, I just want to say a little bit about him before it goes in hiding in my storage bins. But uh, there's already some in there. I'll show you what I have here and kind of tell you a little I know, which is not a lot. Uh, his fame uh, came from these Gitneys, these Kiel uh, Woods, Rescue Woods, right? That's um, something he invented uh, from watching Ben Hogan. And he's sitting here with Ben Hogan, uh, hit a ball out, and he thought, you know, the average guy can't do that. And eventually, years later, he came up with a way of uh, seeing a boat go through the water and use that same concept with this uh, zinc um, put on the low end, giving your weight down low and propping the ball up. He sold a couple million of these is what I understand. Um, and, you know, just he, as you know, grew up in Missouri, worked for one of my favorites, who is um, Kenneth Smith. He worked for Kenny Smith. He <laughs> apparently was riding his bike. Someone I was reading a little bit about him. He was riding his bike and got hit by a ball, a golf ball. And he took the ball because he was mad because it hit his bike. And anyhow, when he got home, he told his mom about what had happened. And he had taken the ball and she said, you know what? You need to return that ball. And he did the next day. And by doing that, he went back uh, to the golf course, ended up in the golf shop, I guess, uh, the club maker area, which was Kenny Smith. And Kenny Smith liked his um, honesty or his character and gave him a job. And he started working for Kenny Smith, started building custom clubs. For Kenny, before I go jump over and look at some Kenny stuff, just because I feel like they're two of the same, not, you know, not identical. Look at this one that's sitting here. And we'll jump over these that are going into storage. So the Kenny Smith was the maker of King's clubs and President's clubs and famous people's clubs. Which Stan ended up doing too. Stan, uh, you know, this bag here is a uh, Bob Hope bag because Bob Hope used to use some of his clubs. Bob Hope living, you know, he moved from Missouri, where Kenny Smith is, uh, Kansas City was, to Beverly Hills and then to Culver City. And, um, but he was known making custom clubs, custom fit clubs. And again, the Gitney was one of his biggest sellers. Um, but he started in, you know, 30s. That's when he moved to uh, Beverly Hills. He started actually, you know, much earlier than that with Kenny Smith. And some of the stories I've heard, apparently he has like 40 putters. Um, I, I have probably 10 different putter types that he has. I'm not sure of all the putters. I'm no expert by any means on that. But uh, this one's nice. I like, whoops, getting a little lost here. I like this one. It's, um, you know, copper faced signature series, I think. Yeah. You know, just um, and some of his other pitching wedges, a little later on stuff. Super nice condition here. Taylor was the first one. You see how he put the weights on the end? The Taylor made all handmade stuff. Stainless. You know, just good. The persimmons. Big, always picking the best wood he could. Same, same as Kenny Smith did. But um, the... Here's a little Gitten one. That's a funky one, right? But that keel... My, the way I hear it is that... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's after he passed. Or be, he died in 1995. <clears throat> but somewhere around his passing, or about the time he's ready to go, he sold his patent to um, Callaway. And what I had heard is that Callaway, before that, was selling these clubs, these hickory sticks. Oh, that one's caught up in there. Oh, there's a putter. I'll bring that one out. You know, selling these hickory sticks out of the trunk of his car at different events. And he did well doing that. And um, then he bought the patent. And I don't have a big Bertha setting here, but that keel 
You know, let me see. The kill is, you know, and you look at a big Bertha from the 90s, you see the same thing, this, this kill going on. I call it a kill wood. And um, so there, that's where Big Bertha, as what I was told where it came from. And, um, you know, not, some of those other putters are hanging out over here. Let me show you these real quick. There they are. Um, so these, what I was wondering about this, is that it says Mel Smith. I wonder if that's Kenny Smith's relative, son, somebody. All right, now these are adjustable. These heads are locked in place. You can lock them in where you want them, but... These, these never became really, uh, I don't think, that heavy price. You know, they're not, they're collectible, but I don't think they're like, you know, big money stuff. I don't think there's another one in here, is there? That looks like, oh, nope, that's not it. That one is? I don't think so. Uh, that is, there's one of his. So that would be a 30s, 40s type one. This might be one too. Oh, Croton. Uh, no, I, th I was thinking maybe this was, but, you know. There's a Stan Thomas. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, just made a lot of putters. Wasn't known for his putters. Again, the fame came from the Gitneys. And, um, well, th th he was famous just for making clubs. People would come to him, custom, get custom made clubs, which he made exceptional clubs and, you know, always using the best, which I think McGregor did on a lot of it, you know, using the best, uh, persimmon woods that you could find. I mean, Hogan, I was just showing Hogan the other day, this apex to me is very fine persimmon wood and, um, yeah, so I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Persimmons. I'm a fan of Stan Thompson. I'm a fan of Kenneth Smith. But this was supposed to be just about Stan. So that's what, what I'm uh, going to leave it with. That's enough of that. And hopefully I'm inside of seven minutes. Yep.